Thank you for the introduction, Sanjay. Thank you all for coming and also very good morning. Um, so I'll skip the introductions. Uh, I'm Mamata. I'll provide a quick overview of uh, our initiatives and also why we at UK Space Agency are interested and the status of the initiatives that we have taken as well. So for those who are not aware, UK Space Agency is the executive agency of the Department for Science, Innovation and Technology. Uh, we jointly deliver the UK's national space strategy by catalyzing investment, delivering missions and capabilities, and also championing the power of space to inspire uh, younger generation. So I would like to start by highlighting some of the driving factors for considering a new form of renewable energy. I'm sure throughout the three days you'll see different versions of this, uh, but it is evident that the global population has an increasing demand for energy. That is again reflecting the changing patterns in, their, in each individual personal usage. And also still currently, we have 2 billion people who have no access to electricity. And this demand is only going to increase and it is expected to increase by two folds by 2050 with the increasing population. In addition to this, there is a need to immediately address climate change due to raising fossil fuel driven greenhouse gases. And if we were to achieve carbon neutrality, even by the end of the century, the studies suggest almost 90% of the energy should be from either renewable or nuclear sources. Space-based solar power represents one option that may be considered alongside other renewable options. The concept, as you all are probably aware, uh, was coined by Peter Glazier in 1970s. Uh, and since then, we have several concepts such as MR-SPS from China, SPS Alpha from US. I think we'll hear more about this from John Mankins later and our own concept called Cassiopeia. So this is developed by Ian Cash, who is in the audience at the International Electric Company Limited in the UK. So globally, we already use solar energy on Earth as a renewable energy, but this is around three to five percent of the energy we currently use. And even if we were to scale this up, um, there are multitude of challenges such as the reduced uh, solar flux, which is only quarter of what we receive on Earth's orbit, and ability to harness energy 24 hours a day, attenuation due to cloud cover, and also weather patterns and variation in the latitudes. So these challenges would be mitigated by having a solar power satellite in orbit that would be able to beam power to the collectors on the ground and therefore uh, overcoming the intermittency of terrestrial renewable energy. So the next question would be why now, um, although the, the concept has been there for decades now, so while scientists and engineers around the world have recognized the potential of space-based solar power, the cost implications have meant that it was not economically feasible. But now due to lower cost commercial space launches alongside rapid advances in low mass solar panels, wireless power transmission technologies and advanced manufacturing approaches, the trade-off on, on the economic feasibility of the solution may be improving and a viable solution might be within reach. However, uh, though this is an exciting opportunity that has a lot of potential, we are at the early stage of its development. There are still many challenges that we need to address. Just to mention a few, a need to understand the complexity of launching and building the biggest ever structure in space, that to using robots and AI, developing approaches to and understanding the debris mitigation and end of life measures for the large structures needed for space-based solar power, Developing approaches that will enable the volume of the launches required uh, around the world, and this includes regulations and licenses associated with that. The impact of space-based solar power and the local environment, and the challenges with the frequency spectrum, specifically the interferences caused to the existing infrastructure. So in order to address some of these challenges, UK has launched several initiatives to understand the economic viability, the mission architecture and underpinning technologies associated with the future architecture. The current phase of uh, funding has four core parts split into lots uh, for funding purposes, and these lots have been led and supported by teams at Department for Energy Security and Net Zero and UK Space Agency. 
I'll come into the details shortly. But in addition to this, as Paul highlighted this morning, UK Space Agency has been keen to support the underpinning technologies um, that will enable commercial space-based solar power future, including in-orbit manufacturing, in-orbit servicing, and deployment of large structures. So support for these enabling areas through our recent National Space Innovation Program, where we have indicated that 30% of the budget will be dedicated to companies uh, in ISM and large scale structure deployment domain with the intention of supporting multiple building blocks that would feed into space based solar power in the future. Alongside this, UK Space Agency has also committed funding to European Space Agency, uh, which is around 5 million euros through GSTP towards Solaris program. So in total, across these four lots, we have nine different projects. Two have been completed, and the remaining seven are on track to be completed by March 2025. And I'm not going into the technical details of each and every uh, one of these projects, as they will be presented later by the project teams. I've highlighted the title, uh, the room, and the time uh, on, under each um, a study and uh, feel free to join those discussions uh, if you're interested. So the first one is the Queen's Mary University of London. They are developing a novel wireless power transmission system using vector phased array transmitter and reflector array antenna. The, advance, the advantages include uh, a smaller beam spot size on the ground and the increased beam collection and aperture efficiency. So the design will also lead to simplification in engineering and reduction in cost. University of Bristol are developing a tool to design and model gigascale antenna array. So the tool will allow comprehensive simulation and validation of key performance metrics of the space-based system. So that includes providing clarity on the performance, safety, and reliability of gigawatt scale wireless power transfer. This work is due to be completed by October, 2024. And thirdly, the satellite applications catapult uh, a project with, uh, with uh, Queen's University, Belfast and Imperial College are va validating the electronic steering and beam quality of Cassiopeia phased array wireless power trans transfer design. So this is uh, within lot one. The first two studies are funded directly by DESNES, uh, Department for Energy Security and Net Zero, and the last study is jointly funded by UK Space Agency and Department of Energy uh, Security and Net Zero. Within lot two, uh, which is focusing on high concentration solar photovoltaics, uh, we have two studies. This complete study is uh, funded by Department of Energy. So we have microlink devices, uh, UK Limited, who are developing gallium arsenide-based dual junction solar cells using their own proprietary process. These cells are designed to achieve high efficiency and increased radiation hardness while also being lightweight and flexible with optimum heat dissipation potential. Then we have University of Cambridge, who are looking into a high concentration solar photovoltaic device. Uh, this innovation to deliver specific criteria for space-based solar power, such as longevity in high radiation environments, high specific power for low-cost launch and integrated thermal management. Then uh, within lot three, we have two more studies uh, by EDF Energy and Imperial College. Uh, they're looking, uh, EDF Energy have completed their work and they've looked at uh, determining the value of adding space-based solar power to the UK energy mix. That is through technology review of feasible and emerging technologies that could be coupled to the space-based solar power ground facilities, studying the impact of space weather and other hazards uh, on space-based solar power, analyzing the value of introducing space-based solar power into the UK grid. Imperial College are doing a more comprehensive study uh, on identifying and quantifying the benefits uh, like system implications and the role of space-based solar power for the whole energy system perspective. This includes its integration with other low carbon uh, energy resources as well. And then finally, we have lot four, uh, which is funded by UK Space Agency. The part one of this is now completed. That was led by Satellite Applications Catapult. The objective here was to investigate mission architectural feasibility, including system performance, risks, and through life uh, costs to a greater degree of confidence. 
again, as mentioned this morning, Space Solar have now secured an additional 1.2 million investment to take this work forward as, as a part two of the initial study. Alongside this, Space Solar Limited uh, with Queen's University Belfast have developed this initial design for a wireless power transmission unit cell and demonstrated full 360 degree wireless power transmission of Cassiopeia design. You can find more details on the links there on the news articles and also there is a dedicated talk later. So although in conclusion, uh, space based solar power presents opportunities. However, there are still many challenges community like this and with the support from the government, hopefully we can make this uh, a reality and which will help us meet the needs of the growing energy uh, needs in the entire world. So on that note, happy to take any questions if there is time, but otherwise I'm around the whole uh, for throughout the conference. Uh, thank you for your attention.